Good morning, everyone. My name is um, Zach Levy. I'm a partner at Deloitte. Um, I run the um, AWS team in Deloitte Australia, working out of the Sydney office. Um, thank you very much for taking the time this morning to come and listen to us talking about Service Catalog. Um, we're here to share a real life story. I'm here with one of our valued clients to share a real story with you as to how we make a real life impact using Service Catalog and AWS Service. Um, before I go into the story, I just wanted to share with you how we view our role as a, as a business partner, as an AWS partner, helping our clients. As a ser full service firm, um, we have, you know, working on, on, on real large scale projects, taking on real life challenges, solving big problems. We've got plenty of ob obligations towards our clients, anywhere from contractual obligations to delivery obligations. But in order to be a true partner to our clients, really help them solve challenging problems, we see it comes down to two key things. First, as passionate as we are about technology, as much as we subject matter expert, as much as we love AWS and all their services, we're there to solve business problems, business challenges. We're there to work with our clients to enable their business outcomes. As much as we love it, it's not about the tech. It's about how they run their business. The other thing is, while we do it day in, day out, for the customers, it's very unique. It's either they're doing it for the first time or the last time. And while we've seen those challenges with plenty of clients again and again, for them, it's very unique. And it's for us to respect the client journey. It's about their business culture. It's about their business outcomes. It's about us understanding their business and helping them to plot a path from A to B um, and get them to where they need to get working around their business constraints, how they do things, and the important milestones or dates within their business. Now you're asking yourself, how's that related to Service Catalog? So um, now I'd like to invite Tanny Oaks, who's um, the Head of Enterprise Architecture for Ticketek. Tanny? Thanks, Zach. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, now I probably, know, yeah, yeah. In, in Australia you don't have to do this, but how about you tell everyone a little bit about Ticketek and uh, what it is that you do? Yeah, so if I was in Australia and New Zealand, everyone knows Ticketek. We sell tickets, we do all these type of things in terms of that. So you'd go out and I'd be at my kids' soccer games and I have most of the parents say, tell me about their experiences that they had of getting tickets and what they got, what events they're trying to get into. So I'll just go in through and give a brief little um, background about Ticketek and um, TEG. So Ticketek, as you can see, is Australia and New Zealand's number one event ticketing and marketing digital, um, digital marketing company. So what we do with that is, is that we're an e-commerce um, business of selling tickets, but Ticketek is part of a wider ecosystem with inside of um, a business called TEG. And what TEG is, is a business that runs live entertainment, okay? So we do ticketing yep. from a Ticketek perspective, we do promotions, we do um, digital marketing, we're an international base, our systems we run across the world, across Southeast Asia, and that's how we kind of tie ourselves together in terms of where we fit into the world. Yep. Oops. Now, give you guys a bit of context about where this all sits onto the side of things. I'm a big, oops, sorry, I'm a big Guns N' Roses fan. Um, and being a big Guns N' Roses fan, a few a year ago when they got back together and they said there, you know, it was always going to be that they were never going to tour together, they were never going to do this. And then when they announced that they were going to be coming back and playing on there, I, like most people, were really excited and looking forward to going and seeing them. Well, what TEG and Ticketek plays in the role in this is, is that we promote business. So, so part of Guns N' Roses coming out to Australia and New Zealand is TEG's promotion company bringing them out. Ticketek as a ticketing business goes and puts the tickets on sale. Um, you know, six months, seven months before the event. We also um, run the ticketing and access control to get into the venues of going in there. So we all play a big part and we run the marketing and that and we have our strong partners, other venues across Australia and New Zealand where Guns N' Roses are going and playing. So imagine um, we have um, one of our pr very proud partners with the MCG, which is the Melbourne Cricket Ground about the 10th biggest um, venue around the world. Think of Michigan Stadium here in the US or um, Wembley Stadium in the UK in terms of the size and what you're going in there. So 
these are the type of things that we actually do within our business and where we work with. And just to sort of sum it up around that side of things, Guns N' Roses play around, 350,000 fans going to concerts, eight concerts, seven cities all together. But, but you don't only do like concerts or even sports events. Sometimes you do major events that take longer, don't you? That's right, Zach. So we also do what we call, as, major, as Zach pointed out, as major events. So Commonwealth Games, for instance, this year, that's a long-running event where there's a lot of complexity of how you actually sell that, what you're actually doing. And that's running for five, six months of on-sales and then the big event through... Um, as you see there, you know, 70 nations, um, 274 event sessions, trying to get all that coordination out. So you're doing that while we're also doing things like putting Guns N' Roses, Red Hot Chili Peppers, bands like that through. So you've got to make sure that while you've got a major event running for a while, you're still going to have multiple smaller events running. That's right, that's right. So that we're always trying to coordinate and keep that balance right. And besides that, we also are a big content business, right? So we also do things like eSports. Um, we bring out college football into um, New, Zealand, um, New Zealand and Australia. Um, we had Brazil versus Argentina out. So all parts of the live entertainment um, industry, Ticket Tech and TEG, um, play a part in it. Absolutely. And, and working with you, we've learned firsthand that this is not simple, right? It doesn't come without its challenges. Yeah, so we have a lot of challenges that our industry um, faces of what we actually have to do. And I want to go through a little bit of these because it will actually highlight what we're actually doing to address these challenges as yep. we go along. So we have this concept of what we call as a hot show. So I was talking about Guns N' Roses going on sale, um, Red Hot Chili Peppers, those type of things in there. Those are what you guys know as saying we call hot shows. They go from zero people on the site, or let's say a small amount of people on the site, to 300,000 people within a second. So we control of when those shows go on sale. They may be 9 a.m. on Monday, they may be 10 a.m. on Monday, they may control along those lines. So we have to go through and sell. Now, if you think of this into the context of what um, happens in the type of volume of traffic that comes through and the emotion and passion, you know, I'm talking about, I'm a big fan, Guns N' Roses fan, I wanna get that ticket, I wanna see them, maybe the only time I get to see them live. These on sales of what they're going in there, you have so many coming in. Now, imagine um, you just had Black Friday over here um, on just past. These on sales are like a Black Friday on sale. We have a shopping center inside um, Australia called Aldi where they have a special type of, might be garden furniture or various different um, items that are only on sale on a Saturday morning at 8.30 and you have people queuing out um, the door. And what they do is as soon as the doors open, everyone comes charging in, rushes in, puts everything into their basket, sort of wanders around and then decides, do I actually want all this or not? But I need to get it in there to make a decision because if I'm standing around looking, someone else is gonna grab it and I miss out. Hot shows are the exact same side of things like that constantly through the day. So you get a lot of these games where everyone's coming in, getting tickets, putting them into their baskets, and then going to their friends, I've got seats here, if you've got seats there, should we go with yours, should we do that? And so you have to be able to manage and control this flow and how this all works, and you're constantly going through. The other type of challenges we got in here is around ensuring that the fans are getting the tickets, right? So there's so many, the world has gone into a lot of different ways of how you can go about and work with ticketing and buy tickets and that going through. Our important part of our business is ensuring that it's only the true fans that are coming in and getting tickets, right? We're not there to be able to um, allow um, other type of industries to come in and to, to do that side of things. So we have to be able to control that and the security side of things and ensure that that happens. And as um, Zach was mentioning, we actually have these major events going on. So the Commonwealth Games, for instance, it's a government-based um, event that's going on there, and we have to be able to say to them, there'll be no downtime, there will be, for the six months, they'll have no impact on their sales channel of people coming in and being able to do that, while being able to allow people coming in and buying Guns N' Roses tickets, or Red Hot Chili Peppers tickets, or Phil Collins tickets, or whoever's coming along. So we have to be able to ensure that we can run our ticketing system in parallel. And I mean by that to support multiple type of events and what's going on. So in order for you guys to have everything in place to be able to cater for that, that, that was one hell of a journey, right? It didn't happen overnight. So it took you a while to get there. That's right, Zach. So 
this is something that we are always have been facing and we had to go through a bit of a journey in these last five years to get to a point to where we are actually successfully doing this a lot. So like a lot of um, businesses that have done such of a digital transformation in these last few years, we went from a data center into the cloud. So we did the traditional lift and shift. We did that to be able to run at scale, to be able to um, you know, have flexibility because as I was mentioning is, is that we get massive loads of people on the site when they're trying to buy tickets for major events or for major concerts. And then there's just a static, steady run of times outside of that. So you need to be able to control and flex. When we were running out of a data center, we were running as if we were covering that 300,000 people buying tickets every minute for seven days a week, 24 hours of the day. With that process, then we had to completely change and look at improving our CICD process to cater for running in the cloud. So that also involved us having to go look into automation, looking at things such as CloudFormation, Jenkins, Ansible, putting those tools in place to allow that support into the cloud, where you know traditionally, as you know, when you're running out of a data center, you don't have that type of pipeline that you need to be able to flex and move out onto that side of things. So that worked into this. And then to support that for our business growth and allow our business users outside of the IT thing, people to have the right tools going on, we introduced JIRA and Confluence for workflow process. Mm. So now those are really important to actually understand is, is because prior to that, you had people around was managing events going on sale, doing all these type of things with things of emails, passing around Excel spreadsheets back and forth, someone goes away or is sick for a couple of weeks, people are trying to look for what's happening, where's the event at, where's it's going. So JIRA brought a whole um, line of transparency and workflow processing within TEG and their clients, such as the venues and promoters that are bringing out the acts. And within that side of things is, we're also we're managing within our company is a growth period, right? So we've been growing outside of Australia and New Zealand into Southeast Asia. So that was, we needed to have the right um, technology in place to allow our growth and the speed that we needed to do to go into these markets and entering those markets and not such a markets where we've got a fix we needed to be able to be light go in put our feet and you know dip our toes in the um, water understand how to sell major events into that and then come back out again which mm. needed to be able to that flexibility that came with cloud and and I know you had quite a few technical uh, mm. programs in place and projects to go through that entire journey but in addition to the technical change, there was a bit of a cultural change within the organization as well, right? That's right, that's right. So I'm kind of go back to the whole Guns N' Roses side of things again. We needed to bring our technology team along the same type of journey and have them actually buying into this. And what it is is that you think about Guns N' Roses, big in the 80s and 90s, then kind of drifted away because they broke up and they had to get excitement back into that side of things. We needed to get excitement into our business to drive our vision and um, technology things we're going into. So the real push into doing things serverless, looking into Lambda, um, all of that opened up and exposed and had our teams really excited into what they could do with technology, where they could take it um, and where they could actually go and be able to take that journey I talked about mm. and ensure that they were all bought into that, that it wasn't just something that was being driven down by them. And that was really important to get to. And, and it's around that time that we came along and started working together. Right? Tell us about, about the experience of working with a partner to support you in, on your journey. What role did we play? Yeah, so one of the hard things that's always around with business, especially when you're going through such a tr um, transformation, digital transformation as what we've done, is you've got the day-to-day -day stuff that's happening going. We call it like you've got the real life that's actually coming on, that will always be there and decide what you're gonna need to get into. So you've got this whole technology plan that you're trying to do, and then, hey, we have a major artist come out, you know, gets announced two weeks before it goes on sale. Mm. We have to, you know, sell it across 15 cities across Australia, and we need to go and drop everything to be able to support that to get that out. Working with Deloitte and as a partnership allowed us to come in and be able to have a partner come and execute things for us while we were managing the day-to-day -day side of things to keep the journey on track. Now, as um, Zach was talking about it, the, what we found the strengths of working with Deloitte on this is that they came in to help us solve our problems, look at our problems, got to learn our business as part of that to actually come into the right solution. Instead of saying, hey, everyone's doing A, 
you guys should do A without actually understanding what happens in our world and what we do within our business and going through. And that was really good. And you respected our customer journey, as you pointed out. Yep. And that um, really brought us along and got us into excitement on that front. That's great. That was a great experience. But let's talk about Service Catalog and, and tell us about the role that Service Catalog played in, in your journey. Yeah. So we talked, I've talked about this, um, the technology, the IT culture changing to be able to sort, support this. But that drive and that change for the IT culture started to spread across the rest of our business, right? And the business culture needed to, and wanted to change, wanted to embrace this world of automation, be able to have more control and be empowered on what they're doing through technology. So traditionally, they would, well, We'll get into that side yeah. of things, but yeah. So, so before before we go into the detail, how about just for the audience who's who's new for to service catalog, just can you just describe the service in in yep. simple English? Yeah, yeah. So, service catalog is a way for organisations to create and manage IT services. They know it's known as products inside of that. So, if you're thinking about in the cloud for AWS, so if you're thinking of IT services, are like EC2 instances. Um, you know, S3 buckets, all the way through to even um, AWS Marketplace products. And it allows you to pull that together into various um, portfolios to be able to drive back and give a non-technical interface mm -hmm. for a business user to be able to use to put that side of things out. What it also does is it allows you to use your existing CloudFormation templates and all of your automation scripts that you've been putting in that are being driven out by the tech teams. You can just reuse those into Service Catalog and bringing that on top. And that's really important because you're not actually bringing in a product that you have to go and redo and change everything that you've been doing and managing on there. What you're giving is an interface to allow this to grow and to give a wider spread of who can actually use it and what they do. So walk us through how you used Service Catalog and, and those principles within within Tech and Ticketech. Cool. So I was talking to everyone about our flow and our process that we went through and one of the important things was bringing in Jira as a workflow, um, workflow process tool for our business. So that's one of the key things to point going out, right? We had this tool in there. So we looked at saying, right, we need to be able to allow our users, which is our business users, to be able to submit a request to schedule a hot show, as you can see there. So I was talking to you guys about hot shows being, we have events, we have Guns N' Roses coming out, they're gonna play at so many cities across Australia. That gets planned out, that's a hot show. So they come and they schedule and in there and going, I wanna be able to have, um, a hot show spun up and available provision for me for my products from this time to that time and have it available and what they do is in that side of things we've built it in a simple way to where you work like a t-shirt size so you go I think it's going to be small I think it's going to be medium I think it's going to be large and allows that to flex in there so that goes into a Jira, Jira service desk so everyone's using that they already have that thing it starts to kick off in the track of such um, pieces of work then there's a hot show approver that goes through and takes that and goes, okay, yeah, that looks it right, it's the right sizing, that's what we're expecting, that's what we want to go. So that is either approved or it gets sent back and go, we think you've got the dates wrong or we think you've got the sizing wrong or you're, you're expecting too much. And one of, this is really important because before, and I'll talk about this, is that it would just go to the IT team and they would always put it as a full size hot show, as if it was always expecting someone like uh, that would be getting 300,000 tickets over you know, uh, an hour type of thing going in. And that may not be the case all the time, yeah, the cost wise. Is someone in IT doesn't want to take the responsibility for the environment to be too small, right? That's right, that's right. So they're over provisioning. This keeps it into the hands of the business to be able to do that. Now, what happens is then it goes into Jira and then it gets Jira integrates into API gateway um, and, um, stack that we've got sitting there to essentially schedule this hot show. Gets scheduled into DynamoDB and it says, okay, here's the whole scheduling. This is what you're gonna go into. We're gonna have, it's gonna be a medium hot show. It's gonna be at this date, at this time. It's gonna go with this URL and it's sitting in there. And with that scheduler, it allows you to actually paralyze, um, paral 
um, run in parallel are um, hot shows. So you can be saying, okay, we're going to be doing a Phil Collins one at 9 a.m. on Monday, and that's going to come in under a URL that represents Phil Collins and take the traffic that way. And we're going to do another one for the Red Hot Chili Peppers at the same time, and that will come in another URL in there. And it coordinates it all to be able to where it directs it into what you're actually wanting to buy tickets for. But you've got this schedule, then you have, um, we use um, CloudWatch um, scheduled events to be triggering a Lambda that's going and checking going, do I need to provision anything now? Do I need to provision anything now? So our site is looking at it, it's running as a normal size, it's just taking normal traffic, everyday events is going on to, then the Lambda goes and says, I need to go and schedule a hot show, it's ready to be actually spun up and get ready, and then it goes to service catalog to actually trigger this side of things and use that in there. And Service Catalog has a set of profiles um, that represent the hot show with all of the products that together build up the hot show. So it isn't just a single website, it's um, websites, it's um, ELBs or ALBs and it's buckets. It's everything that's needed, streaming architecture for um, passing out the data and passing along. So it goes and pulls that all together with Service Catalog and using our CloudFormation templates and then puts the show out and be available. And then it also triggers itself to pull that back down again when it's actually completed, where they're saying in there. Now the important thing with all of this is, is that it's all being done by the business and the business is taking advantage of the automation that we've actually introduced as IT. So it's kind of a step further from the fact of saying, you know, it, you wouldn't before previously they would have, um, the whole way that things would work is maybe a Friday the week before would have a big meeting and they go through, this is what I'm looking at scheduling out, this is what I want to do, here's my sizes. The IT team will be then told, can you spin these up, can you have them to be ready? IT team will say, yeah, sure, the easiest thing for me is just spin it up and have it sitting there forever until we shut down because it's a you know pain for me to go back and forth all this side of things. I'm doing the automation and then they'll be, we're actually gonna change the times and they're going back and forth over emails and um, Excel spreadsheets and it's a real. Yeah, so how long previously did it used to take you the whole process to actually spin up a hot show? Oh, it was a number of days. And what I mean by that is it's not just the, because the automation part of it is just a small part, it's the organizing. What do you want as the URL? What do you want to have in play? This side of things allows that to all sit back into the business side of things and allow them to be flexible in doing this and planning it so, and going forward. So now when you've orchestrated for all those to come together under a, a single click in a, or, or a single action behind Service Catalog, how long does it take today? How much effort does it put on the business today? Oh, it's hardly anything. It's, they use, like I said, you put something in the service desk now goes into just a request and then everything gets runs and scheduled it behind the scenes and tickets off. So with the fact of service catalog has actually allowed us to productize some of our internal systems like what we're doing now with hot shows to be able to drive and or empower our business. So working with you together on this I know that that had quite a positive impact on the business so clearly you're hoping to leverage that success beyond what you've done so ever. So what are your plans going forward for service catalog? Yeah, so we, we have a, a motto in our business. So we, we see that the um, battlefield or battleground around um, our industry, around customer experience is through integration. So we say that innovation through integration is what our motto is going in there. So we've done a lot of um, work in our digital transformation to bring our clients along on that journey by giving and empowering them to be able to drive what they're doing. So where we're seeing things going with um, service catalog is we're gonna start productizing a lot more of our um, parts of our ticketing system and that side of things in there and start turning it a lot more into a ticketing as a service offering in there and to be able to give a lot more out to our clients to be able for them to come in and drive and pick and choose what they're actually wanting to do. So it's getting from you know, we went for this fact of automation to empower our technology team. Then we stretched that out to allow the business, our internal business, to be empowered by automation. We want to spread that out and have our clients, which is the promoters that are bringing acts out, which is the venues that actually we ticket at, that world to be able to use the offering of service catalog to extend into what they do. So that could be from 
getting data through real-time streaming, integration into APIs to be able to do things such as um, pulling in and putting product data onto their websites where they can give unique journeys to their customers on getting tickets that are specific for their type of events and their type of um, their customer base. So all of that is really important and putting that around with service catalog is where we can go. We can look at using AWS Marketplace to be able to put those products out yeah. on there, you know, to put some more commercial um, monetization around it. That's great. So it's, it's been one hell of a journey and, and, and um, we've learned a lot through the process. So if, if you had to sum up just a few takeaways for our audience today, what it is that you'll um, recommend? Yeah, so the key things of what I wanted to sort of talk about and get out there today is, is that we, we see everything as, as culture, right? So we had to go through a journey to change our culture and that actually stretched beyond the technology team into the business, right? So we needed to use that to actually improve that side of things. We asked the other takeaway to go is look, automation isn't just for IT. You should be looking at how you can use automation to empower your business, give more um, to them to be able to do that out. And as I sort of talked about where we're going is the scene is that that customer experience for us, the whole battlefield around, uh, battleground around customer experiences through integration and empowering our customers to be able to take that side of things and go forward. Thank you, Tana. Um, so it was really interesting to go through the journey with you and listen to you again today. Um, um, Thank you guys, this is, this is our story. We're gonna hang around for the rest of the hour if you have any questions specifically about the technical side or, or the business side or the implementation of Service Catalog. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks guys.